today on Real Life. Dynamic dinner conversations. Mark Lowry and Andrew Greer stop by Real Life to talk about their brand new TV series. Plus, on Sister to Sister, is it your place to correct your friend's child? You'll want to hear their responses. And on Real Life Coaching, Walking in God's Favor, Danette Crawford teaches how to be a standard setter. That's today on Real Life. This is real life. God loves you. Jesus died for you. The Holy Spirit empowers you. And the Bible is our, our guide, guide to abundant, abundant life. <laughs> he is J. Anthony Gilbert. And I'm not Don Black. And he's out today, but he left his better half. Oh, yes. Oh, Terry Black. Baby. What a way to start the morning. <laughs> Hi, I'm Terry. We're so glad you're with us. And, and I'm Amy. Yay. Yay. And it is zero degrees today <laughs> driving here to the mountain. It's so cold that I think the deer want to go inside. You know what? I have a question. Where do deer go when it's so cold? I don't know, but I, I looked out this morning and I was looking at all of the deer tracks. Oh, oh sorry. sorry yeah. All of the deer tracks and they went up to our back door. <gasps> I think they're like, Hello, where are you people? I'm freezing out Let here. Let me in. Let yeah, me in. zero oh. degrees. Not even the deer want that. Do you still go hunting? I'm not a hunter. Are you? No, no. no. I mean, do you hunt like them? Like Bambi? Are you kidding me? I would never, <laughs> never, <laughs> never. I would kill Bambi. I don't understand that. And They're my really husband's cute. nickname is Buck, so killing deer is out of the question. <laughs> There's a no-go. Well, Dawn is not with us today. He's um, out of town, but we are glad that Jay is with us today. Yeah, so good. You know, this is a new thing. Uh, yeah. I've never been on the set with you with Don not being here, and so oh. there's a lot of new stuff going on That's today right. oh, good. on Real Life, so you tuned in on a really good time, and you've got some neat stuff that you're going to be introducing today. Oh, as well. you know, yes. Well, y'all know we have four kids, and our youngest child is a student at Liberty University in Lynchburg, Virginia. And Kelsey, my oldest, she and I went on a road trip to pick him up. Here it is. <laughs> Good morning. It's bright and early. It's still dark outside. And Kelsey, my lovely daughter, and I, we are on our way to Liberty University in Virginia to pick up our son, Dylan. It's his last final today. It's the last day of school. They got to be out of there, so we're on our way to pick him up. Glad you're joining us. Okay guys, what's happening now is as you probably know, the car broke down big time. They say it was the engine. We were in Berkeley Springs, West Virginia. There's nothing there, but we went to Roy's, and Roy, the grandpap of it all, he's in his 80s, he drove Kelsey and I to Winchester, Virginia to pick up our rental car on our way to pick up Dylan. We're about four hours behind, but we're gonna be there tonight.
happy ending, but honestly, <laughs> our car, it found out our engine did blow in Berkeley Springs, <gasps> West Virginia, and there's no oh. rental car place there. And um, Roy, we did get towed to Roy, and um, <laughs> Roy's been around for 52 years, oh, and we had awesome. we had to call Grandpa. You saw Grandpa. His name is Roy, and he drove us to Winchester, Virginia, to get our car. Because poor Dylan, the college campus was closed. Oh, yeah. He said I was the only one that ate in the cafeteria that day. Oh. So we were timing it, but you know, it's always great. The happy ending, we were together. We so. wouldn't have believed you if you didn't have it on film. I know. I mean, it's just so <laughs> like. Well, what a mom won't do in order to get to her baby. I oh, know. Oh. He's the youngest, right? right? Yeah, youngest. he is the youngest. So yes, that's right. So um, uh. thanks to Berkeley Springs, that place, Roy's was a grocery store. It was a cafe. <laughs> Our diet restaurant and a garage. So if you ever go to Berkeley Springs, check them out. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm real excited today as well because we've got Andrew Greer here. Yeah. We've got Mark Lowry. Awesome. Mark man, Lowry. I did not know that that was the man that made the song "Mary." Did Mary, you know? Did Mary, you know? I had no One idea. One of my favorite, I did favorite, favorite not know. Christmas songs. <laughs> yeah. I, I wonder how many times he sang that song. Probably thousands, trillions. Well, we are in the presence well, of greatness find out. today. So yes, I mean, what what great guys! So hopefully yes. you'll you'll stay tuned in. Call your friends, call your relatives. Mm -hmm. Tune in. You're going to laugh. You're going to rejoice, and you're going to get your joy back for this brand new Amen. year. That's right. Yes. And then also on coaching, we're going to have Danette Crawford here. I tell you what, you better tune in all week because she's going to be talking about how to walk in God's favor That's and right. become his person of influence, which I know many of you need. I tell you what, I just so mm -hmm. love the coaching piece. Mm -hmm. I've been so mm -hmm. blessed, and I hope you've been blessed too, and that you'll continue to tune in to coaching because it's really geared to help you win God's way. So you can take practical principles, be able to apply them into mm -hmm. your life and grow so we can all be the winners that God's called us to Amen. be. Amen. Growing up in youth group, they used to teach us, are you walking in the fog? We'd be like, oh what? yeah, the favor of God. Oh, that's right. That's right. I've never heard of and that. And that's what we want. We want Different you to walk in the fog in the favor so, of God for your life. <laughs> oh, coming up, the sisters debate if Ooh. it's your place to correct your friend's <laughs> child. Ooh. Ooh. Let's see how they tackle this question on today's Sister to Sister. Hello, welcome to Sister to Sister. You're seeing the best of women of God because we answer questions that you might have from a biblical perspective. And so when I start the questions, I never know who's gonna jump in, so this ought to be good. Here we go. Girls, hmm, is it your place to correct your friend's child? <laughs> well, if you want to get into the fire, that's a good place to start, man. <laughs> I want to get into the People fire. are passionate about this when, mm -hmm. when you correct their children, especially mm -hmm. this day and age. Like, I feel like back in the day, like when I was growing up, mm -hmm. any mom on the block, any mom could correct you, and that was fine with moms. Now, mm -mm. moms get really upset if mm -hmm. you correct their children. So for me, it depends on the situation. If a child is in imminent danger or, or mm. is causing imminent danger to other <laughs> children, absolutely, I think it's our responsibility to say something whether it's our own child or not. When it, it's, when it starts to become something where you don't maybe share the same rules or whatever, it mm -hmm. starts to get sticky and very difficult. I think if you're in your own home, and it's your own house rules, I think you you can say something That's to somebody okay. else's child That's because good, yeah. you don't always have share the same home rules. But I do think you do have to handle it with care. I think you have to, you know, maybe use humor or it, use in a way that you're not making the other mom feel attacked. Oh, don't do it in front of the mother. Hello, that's what I said. Yeah, I definitely, no, 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 no. <laughs> See, I, I, I don't agree with that. that. Because the thing of it is, is the question is, is it my place? Right. Not whether, can, can I, you know, uh, it, but, and, and, and I, I agree with some of the things that she's saying about the how to, but the question, is it my place? Absolutely, I am my brother's keeper. Is it a mm. sensitive area? Yes. Do I need to use wisdom in doing it? Yes, but is it my place? Yes, as a fellow brother or sister in Christ, as a friend, 
as a friend, mm -hmm. yes, because we are all in this together. Mm -hmm. And I would, if you are my friends and you see my child doing something that can be detrimental yeah. to their own destiny, to somebody else's destiny, I would expect you, that's an expectation I have in my relationships. Mm -hmm. I would expect you to. Now, how you do it, yes, that matters. You need to, you would want to use <laughs> wisdom. You want to do it in love and compassion. And some things, if you're not comfortable addressing it, uh, and we've all been in those situations, I might not want to address the child. I'm definitely coming to my friend. Yeah. Oh, I'm boy. definitely coming to you as the mother and making you aware of something that, um, could be harmful to your child. Oh, yeah. See, that, I, not me, that's not where me. I am on that. Yeah. Get permission. I don't feel you should correct a other child unless you have permission from the parent. The parent is the overseer. Well, Would you, you want the school or somebody else doing a correction that you disagreed with? So I feel go to the parent first if you see a problem, if you get permission. Because I feel like, you know, the, the scripture says lead a quiet life and mind your own business. I like that. But see, so, correction and discipline, Roxy, right? Don't you think those are two yeah, different Yeah, but I, I wouldn't go to a friend's child unless I was really close, even a brother or a uh, I wouldn't unless I got permission because they, they might have different ways of dealing with the child. They might already be dealing with that child's problem. Let the parent do it. Well, I, I would want experience. someone to come to me. I've had a bad experience and that's uh -huh. why when, when uh -huh. I look at you and I say, uh oh, I look at you, uh oh, mm -hmm. because I told someone's mother that I didn't think the daughter was dressing properly and I, she doesn't like me anymore. No, I, 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 I'm not kidding. Yeah. She really, the mother took it really bad because she obviously allowed the daughter to dress mm -hmm. like that. Right. Ooh, Mind it's kind of touchy. Your, your verbiage matters. Go ahead. Yeah, mm -hmm. and well, I, Judah, my nine-year-old, had a friend over, and this little boy came over and started running on all of my furniture and bouncing from couch to couch. And I said, excuse me, I'm so glad you're here, but you're not allowed to jump on our furniture. <laughs> and Judah looked at me like, he goes, you don't say that to my friend. And I go, well, this isn't his house. I love that he's here, but this is my house and we don't jump on furniture. So they wanted me to be the fun mom when I was, I have no problem talking to the teenagers that come in my house. I love those kids. So why would I see them doing something that could be harmful to them and not say something? I, I yeah. really do, and it's hard for me because I don't love to confront, but I do because I love those kids. That's I think point. that I'm such a people pleaser, and it's just permeated every part of my life. So I do a thing called zip it unless I'm asked. Hey, I'm gonna ask you, <laughs> come back and see us next time. <laughs>conversation. That's right. What do you say, Jay? Well, you know, I was going to ask you guys, because more of the sisters thing. Now, I kind of heard a little bit from her, and you have kids that are already grown up. What right. is your take from how, where you raise your children? Well, I do think, I, I sort of um, go on the side of Roxanne. I think that you need to ask permission yeah. to say, hey, you know, do you mind if I say something or things like that? Because I've been around both ends. I've been, you know, when uh, somebody came in and would say something about my kids without my knowledge, uh -huh. you know, and I would be like, wait a minute, if my kids did something wrong, you can tell me too, you know? Right, right. So it, it's, um, I would ask permission. Yeah, I mm -hmm. agree with that. I mean, I would definitely not just get up in somebody's, I say like just get up into their uh, grill when they have invited you to their barbecue. Uh, <laughs> make sure you find that out, have, have permission. I totally agree with that. I mean, because if you just, especially in this day and hour, you can get in trouble a lot of times by disciplining your own kids. That's true. Let alone disciplining yeah. somebody else's. And, and you don't know where they're at with right. the child and, yes. and what's been going on. And what you think is bad behavior might actually be really great behavior compared <laughs> yeah. to what they've been going right. through. That's true. You just don't know. No, so really, but what we all need to do is use a lot of love and a lot of grace when we're right. dealing with children. Cheer them on, encourage them, that's love right. them, mm -hmm. you know, care for them. I think that's what we should all be doing for sure. And I do think that children need the boundaries though. Like if you were talking about yeah. kids coming to your own home, right. Right. you know, I feel like they, that, mm -hmm. you know, they don't really want to go crazy. I think if they know that there's certain rules when you go to visit a friend's house, mm -hmm. I, I feel that that's, um, that we all like boundaries. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and I think it's a different thing too as pastors because, you know, you mentioned that, yeah. you know, we have a responsibility to shepherd yeah. people. So that's mm -hmm. another topic. We don't have time to go into all right, that. Right. But, you know, as a pastor, do we have yeah. the right to correct? Yeah. Uh, 
uh, children and things like that. Of course, if they're in the church or they're in our home, it's one thing, but it's another thing uh, just to go up to somebody and just correct them. So there's some wisdom for you today. Yeah. And if this is your first time joining us here on Cornerstone, you'd like to get to know us a little bit better, we have a newsletter that goes out and we can put that into your hands for free. Check it out and you can find out how to get this each and every time it goes out. I was diagnosed with boring mail. I just hated getting my mail because all I got were bills. I felt so bored and disconnected. One day, I called for the Cornerstone Real Life Newsletter. Now, I can't wait to go to my mailbox. Side effects of the Real Life Newsletter may include a closer walk with God, daily encouragement, information about Cornerstone Network special guests, and more. Call today for the Real Life Newsletter. It'll change your life. Andrew Greer and Mark Lowry are best known for their incredible music careers, but we're excited to have them here to talk about their new TV series, Dinner Conversations. That's set to debut right here on Cornerstone. Let's take a look at this quick preview. Hi everybody, I'm Mark Lowry and this is my friend Andrew Greer and we're starting a new film series podcast called Dinner Conversations, turning the light on one question at a time. What does that mean to you, Andrew? Well, communion begins with good conversation and good conversation often begins right here around the dinner table. So we wanted to invite some of our favorite artists and authors and thoughtful friends to join in on the table talk on a variety of topics. And we hope that you listen in and you are inspired to begin some new conversations around your dinner table at home. And on this season, we have special guest Point of Grace, Russ Taft, Funny folks, Shonda Pierce and Ken Davis. Sandy Patty. Buddy Green. Ron Block of Allison Krauss and Union Station. Women of Faith author Patsy Claremont. Nicole C. Mullen. And comedian Anita Renfro. Mark Schultz. And life coach Jan Silvius. So we got one seat left and it's yours. Join us for Dinner Conversations. Turning the light on one question at a time. Right. What song, song did you write? Mary, did you know we like to mention that every program. <laughs> All right, the men, the myth, the legends, they're Woo! here. They're here at the real All life right. dinner table. Yeah. Having well, a dinner conversation. When we walked in this morning, they said, is that the Mark Lowry? <laughs> yeah. I don't know, is there another one? <laughs> well, uh, I'm excited about being on your network. Yeah. We're so glad you're here. We, it's uh, debuting right. here no, on Mary's Corsa, here. so now we're friends for life. That's, that's right. right. That's right. That's right. Yeah, and we grateful. just, you know, about a year ago, I. I called Andrew because he had interviewed me uh -huh. for CCM Magazine okay. and his questions were so good and they made me think of things I hadn't really thought of yeah. and I'm a talk thinker I don't know what I'm thinking till I hear myself say it <laughs> my, <laughs> my dad only talked when he had something to say uh -huh. me and my mother talk until we have something to say. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so I called Andrew and said man I really love the questions you asked and I'm thinking of slowing down next year and I'm gonna need to do something with my time and I and I can sit in my lazy boy and get on Facebook live and yeah. please follow me on Facebook if you aren't <laughs> but if I, and reach 25 30,000 people and never leave the, the lazy boy yeah, yeah, in your pajamas you yeah. I bet oh and, my I've been in the shower and mm -hmm. think of something you know print when I'm in the shower praying and I'll run out and still naked and wet and FaceTime. Yeah, yeah. By the time I dry off, <laughs> all the imagery. people have... I know, imagery. Mm, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't, don't close your mind. <laughs> don't close your eyes, you'll visualize it. <laughs> but it's just the immediacy of it. Right, yeah. right, and so, right. And so now we're through, we've done, done it, we've released the podcast on uh, 
yeah, on the like internet, iTunes, iTunes YouTube. Yeah. But this is our but first this TV. Is TV. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Is it just the same show, but it's on TV now? Yeah, well, there's some edits specifically okay. for you guys so that it makes sense for television because we kind of let the cameras roll, let the conversation roll. Uh -huh. You know, conversation is something that we discovered, mm -hmm. or I think that we talk about all the time, is not necessarily good conversation, productive conversation, mm -hmm. is not prevalent necessarily mm -hmm the way our society is set up with kind of mm -hmm. one-way conversations maybe via social media and stuff. Yeah. Right. yeah. That's right. You know? That's right. So yeah. what we discovered even in that interview, even though he says I ask questions he hadn't thought of answers of before, his answers and replies made me think of new questions. That's yeah. great. That's a you great know? interview. Yeah. Now, um, one of the things I really enjoyed about the podcast or the program, you'll have to watch it, is it, how casual it is. You know, you have Sandy Patty, you know, she's wearing her glasses, she's not in her glitzy gown, <laughs> right, you know, right. she's Sandy just sitting Patty. around talking, you know. And she's you, talking about her blended family. Yeah. Okay, right. so, she's talking about mm -hmm. two divorce ease coming together mm -hmm. and trying to blend and and all that she learned from that yeah. see we wow. want this to be mm -hmm. real conversations right because mm -hmm. the only difference between us and you is we got the microphone mm -hmm. right. we're all a pack of freaks trying to find our <laughs> way home <laughs> we're all and we found out Jesus is the way right. but we Amen. you know there are many ways to Jesus there's only mm -hmm. one way to God and that's through Jesus right. Right. but we've all had many roads to Jesus yeah. mm -hmm. for as many mm -hmm. people as we there sure are there, there are roads and mm -hmm. Sandy's road was one that uh, went through divorce, nearly mm -hmm. lost her career over it, mm -hmm. it, blended this family. It's been a success. Mm -hmm. And so, and then Russ Taft came on. He's yeah. talking yes. about alcoholism right. wow. and addiction. his, yeah. his addiction. Wow. Um, Mark Schultz talked about adoption, all the different, which is another form of blended family, if you think yes. about it. He has biological right. children, adopted right. children. Right. Yeah. Shonda Pierce, who I think mm -hmm. was here just yeah. recently, yeah, she right? Last week. Yeah, she mm -hmm. talks about depression, going kind of the ups and downs. She may have talked about some of that yesterday. But What is one of the conversations that you had at the dinner table and you were like, oh, you couldn't believe that that kind of came out? I don't know that we've had that yet. I'm, I'm look, I mean, maybe we have. Mm -hmm. But I, I want it to go there. Yeah, wow. yeah. You know, mm -hmm. I want it to go as deep as mm -hmm. we can go. Now, right. this is our first season, mm -hmm. right. and we're getting our feet wet. Yeah. And we don't really know what we're doing yet. <laughs> we don't. <laughs> but there, there was one conversation you were talking about Sandy, and you love yeah. Sandy. Oh, yeah. She did say, she was like, you know, I've never really processed this out loud, which, of course, we're just like, yes. Wow. <laughs> and, uh, but she talked about how she can see roads for her children, how they would lead to better you know, if they would mm -hmm. just make this decision, it would have right. a better consequence than this. But how she's been convicted, I can't yeah. speak into my children's life this way if I haven't surrendered my um, my issues with food. If I haven't surrendered this yet, yeah. how can I speak to them? So she was talking about how oh, she's actually boy. partnering wow. with her children yeah. in their journey to better life. You oh, know? And that's, that's something that applies to everybody. So mm -hmm. what you're sharing, I'm sure, touches a chord with all of your viewers, you know, the nope. listeners, you know, because everybody has something like that. Or they uh, know somebody all, that goes through that. We're yes. all on the road. Right. We're all trying to find our way, just like mm -hmm. Mark said. We're freaks, frauds, and failures on our <laughs> best days. <laughs> and no. when we realize that, we, you know, that we're, that we're, all, it's not us and them. It's not Republican and Democrat. It's uh -oh. not male and female. Uh -oh, yeah. It's us <laughs> That's right. and him. Yeah. That's right. And we're all a pack of freaks yeah. trying to find our way home. And right. Jesus is the way. Right. He's at the dinner table with you as well. Converse, I, and I <laughs> yeah. think conversation is part of setting. You know, I, I believe that Jesus has set the table mm -hmm. for communion and we're all invited. Mm -hmm. No yeah. one is excluded from yeah, that nobody. table. Mm -hmm. And so conversation, I think, gives us a safe space, a sanctuary, right. really. Mm -hmm. Food does that, right? Meal time. That's why we bring food into the situation. Because I think when you set a table for someone, you're saying, you're welcome, you're invited. I'm welcome. I'm Everybody's invited. welcome. Yeah. We only exclude the excluders. <laughs> <laughs> that made me think. think. What are you, the excluders? I mean, people who, people who say, we just want our little click and we don't want to uh, think about any, we don't want to ask questions, we don't want right. to. And they end up saying it's Close our way or no way. Right. Oh, and yeah. until you can say, you know, the truth is, I don't know. That's right. why I call myself a Christian agnostic. Yeah. I believe a, a lot, but I know nothing. Right. Wow. Right. And believing is enough. To as many as believed to him, them gave he the right. power to become the children of God. Right. And so I believe, but I have seen nothing. You Pentecostals have hogged all the miracles. <laughs> Baptists have to walk by faith. We don't get any miracles. 
<laughs> but I believe, I believe with all my heart that a man rose from the dead. Right. And that has changed everything. Right. But you guys sure get a lot of people saved. Well, we try. Oh. <laughs> we can sweep them into yeah, the kingdom. Okay. You guys have okay. such a rich history of music, not uh -huh. just talking. I mean, you know, we sing the best. Mary, did you know <laughs> that your baby boy? It's okay. So we okay. want to hear okay. you okay. sing yes. oh, a absolutely. song, a yes. okay. hymn, or or what well, music is a big part of the show. Yeah. And you know we have so many musical guests, but we and I didn't even know he sang until I didn't. Really? Get, yeah, we did. I didn't. Wow. I never said I'd want to sing with him. <laughs> but uh, but come find out, he had this whole other ministry yeah. where he goes yeah. to churches. Yeah. And, 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 like and we all lead do. in yeah. worship and right. stuff. Yeah, and sing. In hymns, it always comes back to hymns. Guess I always love wanna, right. So this is a this is a good Key. one. Key, tears so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take Him at His word, just to rest upon this promise, just to know. Thus saith the Lord, Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I've proved him o'er and o'er. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. That. That is such, Aww. and it's a great way to start our new year, isn't it? it is. Right. To trust, trust in, in Jesus. Jesus. Well, you can trust him because you got a history with him, right? That's right. When you've had a history of seeing him come through, mm -hmm. and we've all landed safely so far. You think, if I was landing mm -hmm. in the plane yesterday, yes. and I leaned to the next lady, I said, Don't you love a safe landing? Yeah. <laughs> and you know, really, you think about it, no matter where you are, what you're going through, right. so far you've landed safely. That's right. Right. You are here, you're alive. We're That's all right. equal. equal Equally alive right mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. Some of us may be sick, some of us may be better, but we're equally alive. That's right. That's and, right. and it's good news. It's just all good That's news. That's right. Amen. And we can trust Jesus. Yes. And we want Jesus to be the Lord of your life too. And you can trust him. Dinner Conversations with Andrew Greer and Mark Lowry premieres tonight at 10 p.m. right here on Cornerstone and on Saturday at 3 p.m. and Tuesdays at 2 p.m. 30 p.m. Oh, right. I mean, <laughs> yeah. you guys are out there now. There's right. no turning back. No turning back. <laughs> that's yes, that's Dinner right. conversations. Jesus, Thank you Jesus. so much yeah. for coming. Yeah. Thank that's you for glad. singing. Yes. Thank yeah. you for doing dinner conversations. We have so much more on this program, but right now we're going to go to Sydney with God in the headlines. Dozens of female Christian leaders are calling on the body of Christ to take a stand for sexual violence against women. 140 women that work in the church and politics signed a statement asking ministries to speak out about harassment and assault. They want the church to repent, create opportunities for survivors to share their stories, and organize places for women to heal. Leaders say sexual violence is an epidemic in the culture, but there's an added level of trauma when it occurs in the church. Jordan Sparks' testimony of how Jesus changed her life touched millions on social media. I believe about God was that he was this big creator and, you know, ruled over everything, but that he wasn't with me or near me. And it wasn't until I was completely broken and torn that Jesus poured his love on me on Easter and that I began to completely surrender to God with my life. The singer shared her story on Kingdom Theology's Facebook page. Sparks says she's experienced a peace she's never had before and she's encouraging others now to trust God because she knows the same way God never abandoned her, he will do the same for others. Well, that's all for God in the headlines. Have a great day on purpose. Do you feel lonely, forgotten? Afraid? You are never alone. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Who is our God? Father to the fatherless, defender of widows. This is God whose dwelling is holy. God places the lonely in families, 
He sets the prisoners free and gives them joy. Know that your life has a purpose. You have meaning and you aren't around by accident. I have called you back from the ends of the earth so you can serve me, for I have chosen you and will not throw you away. Don't be afraid, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my victorious right hand. If you ever feel alone, call our prayer lines. We are always here for you. Know that Jesus is with you wherever you are, and you are loved. On Real Life Coaching, our goal is to help you become the best you possible and to win in life God's way. Do you want God's stamp of approval on everything that you do? Danette Crawford, in her book, The Standard Setters, explores how our character and obedience works together to give us God's favor. Now let's get ready. Coaching begins right now. Danette, I'm, I'm walking in this season, and I'm not bragging. I'm, I'm just praising God of seeing his favor yes. in my life. Yes. Now, that, that doesn't mean that I don't have challenges or issues, and I make stupid decisions sometimes, but, but I see his hand of favor. What does it mean to have God's favor? I believe that favor is God's stamp of approval. And that's my way of describing it. And when we have the favor of God, we can't help but have the favor of man. And what I love in the word of God, it shows us different keys to favor. And in my book, I talk about how Esther had the favor of God. Favor is God's stamp of approval. But Esther was at the right place, at the right time, doing the right thing with the right heart motive. So when we are in right relationship with God, because all favor starts with right relationship with God. And as we're in right relationship with God, we open the door. Maybe today you're not walking with the Lord or you're not in that right relationship and you're trying to have favor with your boss and you're having, trying to have favor and get promotion. Well, all favor starts with right relationship with God. And then when you have that right relationship with God, you open yourself up to the favor and the blessing of God. Because when God's stamp of approval is on your life, there's nothing that can hinder it. And as I said, that doesn't mean that it's an easy street. Right. That doesn't mean that. It means that you are walking on God's path. There's one thing to struggle. It's another thing to, to, to struggle for good. It's another thing to stu struggle because you were stupid. <laughs> you That's did, right. You did the wrong things. Right. So I, I thank God for his grace and his mercy. Mm -hmm. But I'm really thankful for his favor. Yes. And that, that favor of God mm -hmm. is what causes us. It's like a hug. I call mm -hmm. it, often I call it a God wink or a God hug. Mm -hmm. And they're little things, mm -hmm. not necessarily a big thing. It can open the doors for major uh, and major opportunities, but it can just be a parking spot. That's right. It could just That's be whatever right. God. So we want, is it wrong to, to desire God's favor? No. You know, I believe that God wants his favor to surround us. There's a scripture that says, may the favor of the Lord God be upon us and Lord establish the work of our hands. So the favor of God establishes everything that we do. Mm -hmm. And you know, God loves us so much. He's a loving father. Mm -hmm. He wants to give us that parking spot. He wants us to get that dress that's on sale at Macy's. There you go. But you know what? It's also for the big things. The favor of God will take you to the head of that company. God will promote you in the favor of God. He'll put you in a position and take you to a place that you could never take Amen. yourself. Amen. And it's because he's called you to be his standard setter. And he wants you to be in that position for his glory. Now, I don't earn God's favor. No. It's not like you can get to that certain place. If you do this right, I'll do this for you. Right. How do you walk in that? How do you, how do you garner God's favor? I believe that we get God's favor by being in the right place, being obedient to him. And you know, see, Esther found favor with everyone who saw her. 
She had to be seen. But you have to be where you're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Esther was there doing the right thing with the right heart motive mm -hmm. and all that favor opened up. But it said, everyone who saw her, you have to be seen. There's been times when God would say to me, Danette, you need to get out there because my natural self, I am not a bold out front person. My spirit is bold because I'm called to do what God has called me to do. And God would say, Danette, stop hiding in the back. And I believe that some of you, the favor of God is just waiting for you to be seen, mm -hmm. but you need to go up and you need to make that introduction and you need to allow yourself to be seen. Mm -hmm. And when you allow yourself to be seen, God will do it. I've got a story to tell you. There was, uh, I have a television program and somebody was watching my program. So I was seen and he was an atheist. He didn't believe in God. And he saw everything that we were doing in the inner cities and in the community. And he sent me a letter and a check. And in the letter, he said, I don't believe in Christians. I don't like Christians. I'm an atheist, but I am forced as a taxpayer to support all the government programs by paying my taxes. I don't like what they do and they're not fruitful, but I see what you're doing and it's fruitful. I don't like Christians, he kept saying it, but I'm sending you this check of $5,000. Wow, and God said, God. Danette, because you were seen, my favor is on you. And even atheists will bless the work of the Lord. <laughs> That's a tremendous te a testimony. So. so he saw the work, God gave you favor, and then there was a reward to that. Is there always a reward attached to God's favor? I believe that there is. I believe that. And our, the rewards look different mm -hmm. from a parking spot to a promotion, but God's favor will always take you forward and God's favor will never take you back. That's, That's a real key because how you know and discern that it's God is he takes you forward and not mm -hmm. back. Mm -hmm. If you're going backwards, you're in the wrong direction. A pastor friend of mine told me the other day, if you're stumbling over, uh, if, if you're stumbling over yesterday's sins, then you're heading in the wrong direction. That's which That's I, thought was, I thought was a pretty wise thing. Well, how, how can you step out of the favor of God? I always say that God's favor, it's irrevocable and it's irresistible. Mm. So the only way that you can get out of the favor of God is getting out of his will. You know, and when you, maybe today you're not walking right, you're not living right. God wants you to come back. He wants you to humble yourself. He wants you to get back on track by repenting and getting on the course. But when we're on the course, the favor of God, it's irresistible. Mm -hmm. People will like you that they don't even want to like you. Mm -hmm. It's irrevocable. Nothing can change the favor of God on your life if you're living right for him and if you're fulfilling and going in the direction that he's called you to go in. Is it safe to say or fair to say you can't accomplish the call God has on your life without his favor? So many people try to fulfill the call of God on their life, whether it's business, ministry, whatever, without the favor of God. And what I see is they get burned out. They get depressed, they get discouraged. Why? Because they're trying to do it in their own strength. Mm -hmm. We cannot do it in Come our own strength. Now. We've got to be so dependent on the Holy Spirit and we've got to be dependent on the favor of God. Mm -hmm. The favor of God is just waiting for you to ask. The mm -hmm. word says, ask and you shall receive, seek and you shall find, knock and the door shall be open. The favor of God is waiting for you to ask. One time it was around the holidays and we were raising money and you know, I, I, we have this nonprofit, we're not a church, so people don't come in and pay their tithe. And God was putting on my heart to call this businessman for a donation and I didn't wanna do it and I just waited around, waited around. I finally got up the nerve and I called him. And when I was calling to ask, he answered the phone and he says, are you calling to ask me for money? And I was like, yes, sir, I'm asking. He said, well, I've been just waiting for you to call and waiting for you to ask. And he said, I've got a check waiting for you. Come down and get it. And it was double of what I was even going to ask for. <laughs> well, that teaches you a lesson. Now That's you're more right. likely to call. <laughs> well, I, I, uh, I often equate the favor of God to my position in Christ. Mm. Now, what I heard you say a minute ago was prayer is kind of gets us prepared for the favor. Yes. So asking the Lord, what's the difference between asking for God to do something and then him just sovereignly? Because oftentimes the favor of God, you didn't know enough to ask. Exactly. Well, you know what? As long as we use that favor to go towards the purpose, 
I believe that it's endless because God wants us to do great things. He wants us to be his standard setter. And God, when you are walking with the Lord and you are headed in the right direction, mm -hmm. the favor of God will be all over you. I like to say that favor, the favor of God is my flavor. What flavor? <laughs> You're covered in the favor of God, no matter what. And you know what? We can't use it. Esther never used it for her self-promotion. She used it for the glory of God. And you know what? Other people are blessed. Look at the life of Joseph. The favor of God was all over Joseph. Everybody around him was blessed because of the favor of God that was on his life. I like, I like this uh, to equate. Now, tell me if this is wrong, because it may be wrong. But the word favor with, with the concept of favorite. Now, I know God loves all people the same and that he doesn't have favorites per se. Yes. But I like to think about it like that, that when, God, when we are obedient to him, just like mm -hmm. our children, when our children are obedient, they kind of become fav your favorite in some degree because they're doing what the right thing is. And if they do the right thing, you want to reward them. You want to, yes. you want to bless them. Right. Is that kind of how God works with us? Well, I love the scripture that says, if you're willing and obedient, you'll eat the best of mm -hmm. the land. So being will willing is one thing, right. being obedient is another. You can be willing and then stop being willing in five seconds. No, you've got to be willing and carry it all the way, willing and obedient, and you'll eat the best of the land. That's the favor of God. God wants to give his children the best of everything. Esther, when she got to the palace, immediately she won favor with everyone that saw her, and she had the best of everything, everything available to her for kingdom purposes. So often we think of ourselves in the wrong way. You know, we don't see ourselves as worthy of favor. We don't, mm -hmm. we don't think that we've done anything that would deserve it. In fact, we see ourselves through our own perspective. God doesn't see us that way. We think that God will do it for everybody else, and we think that God will use everybody else. But what you need to realize today is God wants his favor on your That's life. Right. You are the man or woman of God that God wants to use. You know, God doesn't choose those that are the most qualified, the most gifted, the most talented. He calls those that have the right heart. And when you have the right heart, it opens you up to the favor of God. Thank God for, this, for, his, for his favor, yes. for his blessings in our lives. Mm -hmm. Now, the enemy wants to steal that. You know, the word says he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. What's he stealing? God's favor. That's right. God's blessing. And so how do we recognize that the enemy is our, wants to steal that from the Lord, from, from our gift from the Lord, and how do we resist that? Sometimes I believe that people step out of the favor of God just because simply they get discouraged mm -hmm. or they think that things aren't happening as fast as they should. Or maybe you look at somebody else, never compare yourself. The only thing that we should ever compare ourselves to is the word of God. We should compare our heart and our life according to the word of God, how God wants us to live. When you look at what everybody else is doing, the enemy can try to steal the favor that is already on your That's life. Right. That's right. Stop comparing and start rejoicing in That's all your good. blessings. That's such a good word because oftentimes what God wants to do in us is, is even greater than he's doing in them. Right. If you compare yourself, who are you going to compare yourself to? Jesus, I would think, Danette. Yes. Otherwise, I'm, 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 who am I going to compare myself to? Because the Holy Spirit lives in us. Mm -hmm. When we, at the end of time, we're going to be judged according to our assignment. Uh -huh. Not anybody else's assignment. Uh -huh. I'm not going to be judged according to your uh -huh. assignment or anybody else's, but God will give me favor for my assignment right. and God will give you favor that you need for your assignment. And I can't do it without it. No. <laughs> you know, without God's yes. favor, I cannot do it. Neither can you. Nope. We have to have his supernatural infusion. I love that. His infusion of things. Yes. Because many times favor is things. Yes. I mean, they're tangible things. Yes. It's, it's, it's great to feel the love of the Lord, but sometimes you need uh, favor in the finances to pay the, to pay the bills. Yes. You know, so God's favor is across all of our, our lives, physical, spiritual, and yes. emotional. Yes. It's so important. And that's why uh, this book is so important. And if it was just a chat, if it was just a book on favor, that alone. Now I'm talking to you. I, I think you, you, you know that you've not been standing up and expecting God's favor. You've been expecting the worst, not the best. You've been settling for average 
rather than reaching for extraordinary. God wants you to, to live extraordinary. He has, he has a plan for your life that's second to no one. No, compare to who? Who are you going to compare it to? Compare it to the promise. That's what I say. Pro the promise of God. That's why this book is so important for you to bring it to your family. Incorporate it into your life. Along with a book which breaks down a bunch of other truths. Along with favor, I want you to know that we're going to send you a DVD. So the book and the DVD with your gift of this ministry of $25, just like Danette said, we're not a church. We are supported by our partners yes. and our friends and the, the people who watch the program who are challenged by the truth. Let this be a challenge to you. For your gift, $25, we'll send it to you, rush it to you, pay, we'll pay the shipping, and you can put it in play. And then you can start to see God's favor. Now, just getting it in the mail, you're not going to see God's favor, just get it in the mail, but in, in putting this truth to play in your life, then you'll start seeing things happen. You go, how'd that happen? God's favor. Why'd this happen? God's favor. You just see him over and over working in your behalf. Now, Danette's been with us all this week and will continue with us this week, teaching us about how to be a standard setter. Tomorrow, we're going to talk about obedience. Obedience and how that sets us up to be extraordinary, to be a standard setter in our culture, to be who you're called to be, to walk in the way that God has called you to walk and to achieve supernatural results. That's the winner that the Lord has created you to be. You say, well, that doesn't sound like me. It is you. And as God rises up in you and the Spirit anoints you, things start changing in the physical, the spiritual, and in the natural. Here's the story of a life change. My greatest blessing and delight comes from the one who calls me grandma each and every night. My beautiful granddaughter is such an adorable, miraculous gift from God. But one day, she began to have difficulty speaking. Out of nowhere, she began to stammer and stutter. I was devastated. I began to fast and pray for God's healing upon her. After praying with Cornerstone, the next day I noticed I had a new voicemail. I love you, Grandma. Thank you, Grandma. I love you. A tear of joy immediately began to run down my face. Thank you, Cornerstone, for your prayers and support. For my granddaughter is now healed. All in the name of Jesus. Well, we thank God for the favor of God, even yes. with that wonderful miracle there, that's one of the benefits of having the favor of God is that right. we can walk in healing as yes. people. And you know what I was thinking, mm -hmm. uh, out of her statements there, I was thinking of a one-liner, my favorite flavor is favor. <laughs> My favorite flavor is favorite. What did yes. you guys take from today? Oh, well, I had never heard of my favorite flavor is favor. <laughs> and, you know, sometimes I can relate to, I think Dawn was sharing about that a lot of times I don't think I deserve the favor of God, you know, because God is so good and there's, you know, and, and but it, it's not, it's not the right kind of thinking. I guess you want to call it a stinking thinking kind uh -huh. of thing. Yeah. You know, I think a lot of us fall into that kind of trap, thinking that we, for whatever reason, but we should receive the favor of God. Right, guys? Well, I mean, mm -hmm. we, yes, because mm -hmm. when you're expecting the favor of God, you're really um, believing in faith for the promises mm -hmm. of God on your life. And his, you're believing that God's hand is on you supernaturally. And really, as sons and daughters of God, we need to believe, like, I am the highly favored daughter of the Most High God. There is nothing he would not do to get that provision to me mm -hmm. or, or to bring supernatural healing to me or to give me wisdom in that situation. I mean, to me, we should expect favor. We should believe for favor and we should really see it manifesting in our life. Well, what about people that are going through some hard times? Though? Right. How, how do you receive favor when you're sick yeah. or like the, you know, your granddaughter was ill. How, yes, how does that right. work, guys? Right. What do you think? Well, I think the favor of God, you know, I think a lot of times we think as believers that, well, 
when we got saved, we clean up and do better and then God just kind of blesses our mess. Mm. We have to understand when Jesus Christ died on the cross, there were two people on that cross. You and I were also with him on there as well. And now we are, as you said, sons and daughters mm -hmm. of the living God. He doesn't see us as people trying to get there. He sees us yeah. completely perfect. You know, that's, he looks just like when Jesus got baptized and he came up out of the water and said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. And because yeah. we have faith in Christ, mm -hmm. his presence now comes on our life. And I, I like to say it like this, favor is what removes the labor mm -hmm. of our life. You don't have to work yeah. so hard when you have the favor of right. God on your life. So if you're going through a rough time, yeah. the favor of God is available for you today. Mm -hmm. You can tap into his favor by simply, as Danette mentioned, by simply obe being obedient to the word of God. Yeah. which is why you need to get your hand on this DVD and on this book as well. For your gift of $25 or more, we want to put this mm -hmm. into your life. We're going to pay for the shipping. We're going to pay for the handling. We're going to put mm -hmm. this into you so then you can win God's way with favor. Right. A one hour power pack DVD along with the companion book mm -hmm. to be able to launch you into the favor of God. Right. And I love the fact that we have this type of material to put into people's lives so That's that right. they can practically Absolutely. walk out the word right. of God and get his favor. So they can study to show mm -hmm. themselves approved. You know, what is the favor of God? What does it look like? And is it working in my life? Am I believing God for it? Right. I remember, uh, I like what she said. Esther didn't use God's favor on her life for her own glory. She used it for the glory of God. Right. So it's not about getting God's favor just for yourself and for your life. And mm -hmm. it's, it's for something bigger than just yourself. I remember when we were calling on a piece of property, we were calling on a building as a mm. church and we said you know hey we're interested in this this property and they said we don't we're not selling that property it's too much for you right now what about a building that we just give you for free <laughs> wow on. with wow. five acres on. on one of the busiest you know it, it highways right. in, in western pennsylvania i mean it was like that is what you call the favor of god mm -hmm. a jewish organization giving it to a christian church wow. there's and then using that favor for the glory of God to right. see lives changed for him. It's not mm -hmm. about you being great. It's about Jesus there being great and Jesus being lifted up. And he didn't do, he, and God did something that you didn't expect him to do because right. your focus was on something else. Right. So his, and his ways are so he, much bigger. So Oh, so much better. If we would just rest and quit trying to work it out in our own natural ability, God has something that's even better than what you could ever imagine or think. That's the mm -hmm. way he is. That's what we call real life, abundant life. His ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. Mm -hmm. So let's get out of our natural thinking and let's get into the supernatural, get into God's word and expect his favor to operate in our lives. You know what I liked about what Danette also did is she based her book on the book of Esther in the Bible. But sometimes just reading, uh, you know, I read through <coughs> Esther that sometimes I, I don't always get the insights that other people might get. Right. And that's why having a book called that's The right. Standard Setters, yeah. it gives a different perspective of the book of Esther that you read as well. And so I think it's, that book and the DVD is a great way for you to start off the new mm -hmm. year, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Operating in favor. So mm -hmm. call right now, 888-665-4483 to obtain this book for your gift of $25 or more and along with this DVD to help you walk in the super supernatural favor of God. May 2018 be your year yes. of supernatural yes. favor. Now, one of the things about favor that's so important as well is God always sends his favor upon his purposes. Mm -hmm. That's why Esther had the yes. favor is because she was, she couldn't just go into the king's room just to go into the king's room. Mm -hmm. She went in there on kingdom business right. as a kingdom ambassador. Mm -hmm. And when you see your purpose, your call, and you start walking in it, mm -hmm. you are going to see the blessing of God and the favor of God come on your life. I like what you said about your building. Mm -hmm. As you were just focused mm -hmm. on the purpose mm -hmm. that God put inside of you and the Pastor Buck's purpose, heart, right. the favor of God, he financed everything that was and necessary. And if you think about Esther, she didn't, she didn't know how the story was going to pan Absolutely. out that we're going to read today. And she said those epic words, if I perish, I perish. I mm -hmm. mean, it was quite possible for her to lose her very life. Right. And so many of us are facing impossible 
situations where we need the hand of God, the favor of God on our lives. And it might be one of those moments like, I don't see it, but I just have to believe and mm -hmm. step out in faith cool. that God is going to be with me where mm -hmm. I go. And if I perish, I perish. But you know what? While I'm doing it, I'm going to believe God That's for right. his favor and possibly save many, many people right. in the process. Well, and that's something that she said too, Danette, was willing and obedience. Yes. And I think that's what Esther was. Yep. Like you were saying, she didn't know the outcome. We know the end of the story, but right. she didn't. And that's so many times what we need to do is just focus on focus on being obedient to what God's called us to do yep. and trust him for all the consequences. Right. Well, I like what you said there, f f trust him with the consequences. A lot of times we're obedient to God as long as everything works out <laughs> the way we want it to. You can't be results oriented with God. Sometimes the favor of God comes on your life, like Sister Amy just said, when it's unfavorable circumstances. Right. Everything isn't working out. You don't have enough money, but then God tells you, be obedient. And yeah. I believe there's somebody out there right now that you need to take a step of faith. Yeah. You're not feeling anything. You're not sensing anything. Maybe you're a businessman looking for a building. <laughs> Maybe you're a person that's looking for a spouse in this year. And you said, well, you know, I've toiled and I've fought and I've done it and I haven't caught anything like Peter when he fished all night, caught nothing. Mm -hmm. But Jesus said, go again and let down your net. There's somebody out there right now that God's saying to you today, yeah. go and let down your nets for a catch. And I know you've worked hard and you've toiled all night, but the favor of the Lord is on your yes. life today. And if you're believing God for favor right now, pick up that phone and call in. Our prayer partners want to pray with you as well. 888-665-4483. And while you're calling in with your prayer requests, don't forget to sow that seed of $25 or more to get this DVD and to get this book to position you practically how to walk out the Word of God so then you can have the favor of God in your life. And I like what you said earlier, Pastor Amy, that my people perish for a lack of knowledge, knowledge. and this gives them that ability to have those practical principles so they can mm -hmm. find God's favor. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God and also hearing revelation brought out from the Word like the story of Esther as Danette did. That's why you've got to run and get the book so right. you can expound, so you can grow, so you can build your right. faith. So when you're questioning, does God want this for my life? Mm -hmm. You're like, oh yeah, he does. God wants his favor on my life. I believe, you know what, he loves us. Don't right. you want your kids favored at school? Right. Mm -hmm. Don't you want them favored on the sport? Yes, how much more our heavenly father wants us favored. Well, do you think that maybe the first step we need to do is just say, I am loved and highly favored, yes. you know, from God, right. yeah. you know, and then just by repeating that to yeah. yourself, you're mm -hmm. going to start seeing yourself the way that God sees you, Amen. you know, that you are loved, you are beloved and you are yeah. highly favored. And so as being highly favored, wouldn't we want to know yes. that God has his favorite. You are his favorite. Yes. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. So today just receive that. Mm -hmm. Just claim that even right where you are. Say, yep. God, I thank you today that I am blessed you, by the best and yes. I am highly thank favored. You. Favor. Wherever you go today, we even declare over your life that the favor of the Lord be upon you that'll be upon yes. your family, that'll be upon your ministry, Business. that'll be upon yes. your children, yes. even as they go to school, that the favor of the Lord will be upon yes. your life today. Yes. This is your year, 2018, for a greater level of favor than you have ever had before. Right. I'm excited mm -hmm. for you because God's best and blessed days are still out in yes. front of you. And as always, we like to close, we open every program with prayer mm -hmm. and we close every program with prayer today. So we're going to pray today and ask God's blessing. And yes. Terry, would you mind closing us in prayer? Heavenly Father, we just come before you as, as your children, as your sons yes. and daughters, that yes. we are loved, Thank we are you, blessed Father. and highly yes. favored. Yes. And we together, yes. we lift up each and every prayer request that's yes. before yes. us. We pray, Father, for reconciliation. We pray for healing and physical bodies. We thank you, God, that you are a Stone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.